Yeah, Ambassador Nicholas K. Welcome to Universal TV. I think it is uh, my second time to have an interview with you. Uh, second, we are very happy, or we are congratulate you the work that you're doing here in Somalia, especially Mogadishu and all the regions of Somalia. And we are very happy to see that you are meeting with Somalia community around the world as to talk their country. So I wanted to ask you first, uh, when the United Nations announced that you are the UN representative of Somalia, what do you obviously do here in Somalia? Um, well, thank you very much indeed for inviting me back to Universal TV. It's a very important uh, opportunity for me to speak to many Somalis here and in the, the rest of the world. Thank you. Um, the mission of the UN assistance mission in Somalia is really to now support this new phase of Somalia's history where you have a legitimate internationally recognized federal government uh, and we are here to support the strengthening of that uh, federal Somalia uh, which is a big political task um, as all Somalis now have to sit together and decide how a federal Somalia will work. Um, how you will divide yourself into federal member states and how you will share power and revenue and resources among them. It's a, it's a big uh, political challenge uh, but it's one which uh, the Somalis will, uh, will lead and will resolve and the UN is here to assist that mission politically. We have other, other tasks we're do, doing as well, mandated by the Security Council, which are very important, uh, such as uh, the promotion and protection of human rights, uh, and also the building of capacity for the government and institutions to respect human rights. Um, that's a very, very large part of our mandate. And then we also have a, a task to do in helping the government to coordinate international uh, donor assistance and very much particularly in the security sector uh, to strengthen the coordination for developing a strong Somali national security capability. Okay, uh, we know that the uh, UN offices just uh, they are working here in Mogadishu while uh, Unsom and other NGOs here. So how do you see the security now? Um, in Mogadishu um, Frankly, the security situation is still very fragile and over the last six months I have been here, um, I would say there's probably been uh, several serious incidents which have made it much more difficult for us as the UN and other international partners to, to do their work. Um, so it's, it's a tough time uh, and we've had attacks on international targets including Turkish Embassy for example as well as the as the UN um, but we are very determined that uh, these will not stop us from working in Mogadishu I live in Mogadishu I work in Mogadishu the mission is based here and we will continue to, to do that so how do you think uh, uh, to make rebuild Somalian uh, military forces? This is a, an immediate challenge and also a long-term challenge. Um, since I arrived in June I have very much focused on two security needs. One is really to strengthen actually AMISOM uh, because AMISOM is uh, doing a lot of the security work and the fighting against Al-Shabaab and has done it well and with success but needed more resources to continue that. But the second is most importantly to strengthen the Somali National Army. Now that is both now to allow the Somali National Army that does exist to operate jointly with AMISOM and I'm very pleased the Security Council has uh, approved now a logistics support through the UN for the Somali National Army when it is conducting joint operations. That will be very important. It will give them transport, food, fuel, medical attention, 
very important things. That's immediately to make them operational or more operational. Uh, but there is a longer term training and capacity building and restructuring of the armed forces, which many partners are, are involved with. And you know, the EU is doing a big job. 3,000 so far have been trained. There will be more. Uh, US and other countries are contributing a, a lot as well. So this will take a little bit of time. Uh, do you believe that the Somalian army forces uh, to manage their country more than 22 years? So it can, that, that can be possible? Yeah, absolutely. That, that has to be the real priority and objective to create that capability. Uh, the international community, whether it's the UN or AMISOM and the African Union, have no intention or wish to stay here indefinitely. Um, the real objective is to make sure that the Somali police, army, judicial system is able to, to operate effectively. Okay, the UN and Directive deal, uh, deals uh, with the regions of Somalia. Uh, this approach, uh, I think, uh, undermined the authority of the federal government. Is that inclusive to all plans? Um, our role here is very clearly to support uh, the federal government in its efforts to create a federal Somalia. Um, now, the federal government also deals with the different regions um, and our role is to, to do likewise. So UNSOM has got offices now in uh, Kismayo and in Baidoa, uh, as well as in Garraway, uh, and uh, we will expand our presence, I hope, uh, into, into the regions in support of the, the federal government and in support of this, as I said at the beginning, this important process of Somalis deciding amongst themselves how to form a federal state and exactly what that means, which is part of also reviewing the constitution and eventually voting probably in a referendum on a new constitution. So it's very important that we should be uh, in the regions uh, and we should be close to the Somali people. Uh, we certainly speak to anyone and everyone we are not favouring one group or another. It's very important that we should listen and be accessible to, to all parties. Uh, the federal government has uh, no resources, as you believe, to repeal or to, to build a strong and affection uh, institutions, as you know. Mm. Uh, so what is the UN doing uh, to, to help and to promote the federal government institutions? You're absolutely right. It is all about institution building and I know President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud and his government are, are very, very focused on the need to, to build institutions. Um, this is something which we are doing through providing advice and technical expertise. Um, and we have a lot of uh, cooperation also with UNDP and other uh, agencies that are providing this kind of support. It's, it's something I think we need to do, do more of and to do more quickly um, and uh, I think this is going to be something which once the political issues at, at Villa Somalia now between the Prime Minister, President and that, once those are all resolved and we can get back to normal business uh, then this is going to be a very high priority. Okay, Somalian population, uh, uh, as you know, they demoralize uh, this federal government when they hear the conflict between the president Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud mm -hmm. and his prime minister. So, how do you see this conflict between two leaders? I mean, I think it's uh, it's important that uh, this should not be over exaggerated and over dramatized. I, I know, as you know, in Somalia's history, there's, it's not unusual for there to be some of this uh, tension. But it's not only in Somalia. There are many governments and countries around the world where uh, 
there is reshuffles and changes of uh, personnel within the within the government uh, reasonably frequently. So we shouldn't over dramatize it, but it is true to say that you know this is something which needs to be solved very quickly now because there is important business for the government and the parliament to be getting on with and this is currently paralyzing and a little bit distracting from that so we need to get back to normal business as soon as possible okay uh, could you please uh, clarify the united nations positions on the possible departures uh, as you know of the prime minister and the damage it could cause yeah. I mean, as I say, I think we will soon get back to a position where we have a government uh, in place, focused on its task, uh, and its task will be very much one of delivering what the Somali people are keen and desperate to see, which is better security, um, above all, better economic possibilities, social services, education, uh, health care, and all the things that really matter. Um, so I think as soon as we can have a government that has the chance to focus on that with highly competent, dedicated uh, ministers in place, then this will be, uh, this will be a good opportunity for, for Somalia. Um, but it's going to take apparently some time, it may be now in the hands of uh, the parliament to, to decide. And you know, things need to go absolutely according to according to the due process um, and I'm encouraged that you know this is uh, if you like a, a political problem or a political fight which is being resolved using the mechanisms and institutions that exist for that purpose okay Recently, there was a peace uh, conferences in Mogadishu between Juba administration and the federal government. Do you think that uh, conference or that results was uh, fruitful? I do, actually. Yes, I was in Addis uh, for the signing of the agreement on the 28th of August, and we had uh, supported that. And we and we still definitely think that this is a a step forward. Um, I said at the time and since that you know, what is important is that this is a, a classic political agreement which involves give and take and compromise so nobody has got exactly everything that they wanted from it but that's that's politics and uh, now the important thing is to implement the agreement particularly integrating some of the militia disarming some of the militia supporting the setting up of the local administration uh, and so its capacity to deliver needs to be helped to develop as well um, you know these are there is important sort of steps that need to be taken okay uh, what's the barbers uh, of your visit to Puntland? Puntland uh, this was my third visit in six months that I've been here um, this visit is very much to was to support and encourage uh, a free and fair and credible electoral process. Um, so I went there to, to listen and, uh, and learn from everybody involved, from the candidates, the traditional leaders, the uh, government now, civil society, to listen and hear their perspectives and their concerns to see how things were going and whether the UN could help to support this. Okay, as you know, Buntran has started uh, cooperating with the federal government temporarily. Uh, was this issue raised in your visit to Buntran? Um, this time, uh, not, not enormously. I've discussed this before with uh, President Farole and the, uh, the Puntland authorities. Um, I certainly believe it's important that there should be a strong cooperative relationship between Mogadishu and Garraway. Um, Puntland is the only federal member state currently in, in Somalia and so as such it has a privileged position but it also has duties and responsibilities as well to act in support of the federal Somalia. Um, 
What I have said and uh, emphasized in my talks is that we do hope as the UN that whoever is elected president, whichever of the candidates is elected, that after the 8th of January they will be committed to a, a strong and cooperative uh, relationship with Mogadishu. Uh, and I think you know, that seems to be the, the intention from what I heard. Okay, uh, the cyclone hit uh, Puntland uh, last week, as you are uh, well aware of. What was the response uh, of the, from United Nations in terms of uh, food, uh, shelters and medicine? The UN has been very quick and active on the, on the ground, working with other partners and working with the, the Puntland authorities. Um, but some of the very sort of uh, quick responses which the UN has provided is, uh, for example, food uh, for 4,000 households, that's for 24,000 people uh, for a month. And that's a food distribution that our WFP has, uh, has conducted. Um, we've also focused on the, on the great challenge of uh, the water, which uh, a lot of the wells have been contaminated, so we've identified seven that will be rehabilitated, and also water purification treatments. Two and a half million uh, tablets are available and being distributed. Livestock is a big issue. Uh, and our FAO colleagues, Food and Agricultural Organization, have been conducting detailed assessments of how many animals have been lost. Uh, and they're looking at immediately treating the surviving animals, some of whom are quite sick and they're providing veterinary care. Um, and then they're looking longer term at the challenge of and replacing the, the dead livestock, which is the livelihood of, uh, of many people. So I think the, the UN has, uh, as I say, along with many others, um, other neighboring countries, Djibouti, Ethiopia, and others have con contributed uh, generously. Uh, so I think the response is, is on track. Okay. Uh, when do we see UN building hoods, schools, uh, hospitals in Somalia, mm. especially here in Mogadishu? Um, already the UN is supporting a lot of uh, education and, and health care across the whole of uh, Somalia. Um, 760,000 primary children are at school sponsored by UNICEF at the moment and I'm pleased that nearly half of those are, are girls uh, and we are working very much supporting uh, the Minister, Minister Mariam Kasim's project or program go to school aiming to get a million children back to school in the next three years um, so you know the UN is is contributing quite a lot and also on the on the healthcare front but I'm very conscious that you know the needs are are great um, and we have to do several things I mean we're doing a lot of humanitarian which is work which is helping those who need help here and now um, food assistance, shelter, etc. Um, and that's important, but we must also do humanitarian work which builds the resilience of these communities so that they're more able to resist shocks in the future, famine, floods, etc. And we need to start also helping on long term development uh, so that the institutions of education and health, judiciary are, are built up. Uh, so, you know, we're active on all of those fronts with the federal government and you know, it will take time. And some of the challenge is the security environment. Uh, we have to be frank, you know, this is not yet a, a safe place to, to live and work, um, as indeed I'm afraid many journalists know. Um, many journalists have uh, paid with their lives um, in shootings and assassinations in Mogadishu and, and elsewhere. Uh, so you, as much as I, know that uh, this is still a, a challenging 
place to work. Uh, the AU is occupying uh, the Somali football stadium uh, in Mogadishu mm. uh, and, uh, and refuse uh, for the football association uh, to build uh, it is glory. So what do you know about this? Uh, I'm not very informed of the details. I've heard of this, this case before and uh, I mean I certainly have a lot of sympathy with the uh, I mean, I've met for example the, the Somali Olympic uh, National Olympic Association and committee um, I mean, it would be ideal if uh, Somalis and Somali youth could enjoy all the uh, all the facilities that there are, the stadiums, etc. But of course, there is always a balance between their needs and the needs of uh, security forces, including Amisom. Uh, and I am sure that Amisom and African Union have no intention to to use facilities for longer than is necessary. Okay, uh, your last, uh, my last question, or just you have uh, this opportunity to University TV. Mm -hmm. I think it is your second time uh, to give uh, this, inf this uh, interview, especially yeah. here, this station here in Mogadishu. Yeah. What are you going to say, Somali people, Somali uh, diaspora, mm -hmm. and also all Somali communities? Mm -hmm. What are you going to say today? Well, my message is a message of, uh, of hope and optimism. I know it is very easy for us to focus on the, on the negatives and on the challenges, the security problems, the political disputes, uh, the lack of social services, etc. All of that is absolutely true, but in the bigger picture, I really do believe that Somalia has turned the page on its last 22 years of, of chaos and violence um, and there is a real will and determination from Somalis which it is my duty to support a real will to see now proper government proper institutions and a peaceful solution to the problem of creating a federal state and so it's a time of great great hope great optimism uh, and great opportunity and Somalia needs all the help it can get from the international community but also from the Somali diaspora as well and there are many many brave I think Somalis who have returned from from overseas uh, to try and contribute but we shouldn't forget that the vast majority of Somalis are here in Somalia and most of them have been here all the time and they have, above all, the most valuable contribution to make and we have to make sure that they have what they need, which is good education, good security, good jobs and economic opportunities. So this is what we are all determined to, to work towards and I'm sure that by 2016 we shall have a Somalia at peace with itself, with a growing economy, and with institutions which Somalis can be proud of. United Nations representative to Somalia, Nikkei. Thanks for this opportunity. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. All right.